so in this video we are going to cover the duodenum so before starting that we should know the uh, parts of the small intestine so what are the parts of the small intestine in the last class we have studied about the stomach and stomach will continue as the small intestine so first part we have the duodenum and jejunum and ileum so these three parts belongs to small intestine in this video we are going to cover only the duodenum as you know before starting any of the organ we should know the location of the organ so what is the location if we will draw these lines and uh, we'll see the location here is the location of the umbilicus so it lies in the abdominal cavity above the level of the umbilicus now what is the shape of this organ this organ is a c shape this is the c shape organ it lies opposite to the l1 l2 and l3 vertebra so if you will draw here the vertebra this lies at the level of l1 this is l2 and l3 the length of the organ is total length is 25 cm and it has four parts we will divide the duodenum into four parts now we will see what are the parts of the duodenum so this is the first part of the duodenum this is the second part this is the third part and this one is the fourth part so first part is also known as the superior part of the duodenum and if you'll see it is the 5 cm in length second part of the duodenum is also known as the descending part because it is going downward descending part the length of this part is 7.5 cm third part is known as the inferior part or the horizontal part length of this part is 10 cm fourth part is known as the ascending part the length of this is 2.5 cm so the third part is the longest part of the duodenum if you want to see the parts in inches part is 1 inch long and first part is 2 inch long second part is 3 inch long and this third part is 4 inch in length now we will see the first part in detail so the first part starting from this point this is known as the pylorus of the stomach and it is going backwards upwards and to the right and it is meeting with this this point of the second part of the duodenum and this turning point is known as the superior duodenal flexure now we'll see the peritoneal relations as you know this first part initial 2.5 cm it is movable okay rest of the part is fixed and this portion is attached to the uh, above to the lesser omentum and below to the greater omentum and rest of the 2.5 cm it is fixed and it is also it is also retroperitoneal okay it is retroperitoneal behind the peritoneum it means what only the anterior surface is covered by the peritoneum now we will see the visceral relations visceral means related to some viscerals so what are the anterior relations anteriorly if you will see it is covered by the we have the liver here this side we have the liver and below we have the gall bladder also okay so anteriorly relations are liver and gall bladder and posteriorly what are the posterior relations you can see this duct and you can see this artery and one vein is there portal vein that is also running behind the first part so what are the relations so we have this duct is known as the bile duct 
bile duct and this artery is known as the gastro duodenal artery and third relation is portal vein what lies superiorly superiorly we have the attachment already you have studied attachment of the lesser omentum and this side we have the epiploic foramen so superiorly related to the epiploic foramen so superiorly we have the epiploic foramen and below below what is this this portion is known as the this is the pancreas so we have the head of the pancreas so these are the visceral relations anterior side posterior side superiorly and inferiorly now we will see the second part of the duodenum so this was the first part this is the second part it is extending this part is coming like this first part this is coming like this so this is known as the superior duodenal flexor and this portion is known as the inferior duodenal flexor so the second part lies between the superior and inferior duodenal flexor and opposite to the l2 and l3 vertebra so what are the peritoneal relations so second part mostly it is retroperitoneal and fixed it means the anterior surface this full anterior surface is covered by the peritoneum but only at the mid midline here in this portion it is not covered by the peritoneum where it will come in contact with the colon now we will see the visceral relations if you see anterior side in the last picture also we have seen it is there is the liver so this is the right lobe of the liver anteriorly and this is the transverse colon okay so this is the transverse colon anteriorly along with the transverse mesocolon and in the lower part also you will see some coils of the small intestine so these are the anterior relations so we have the right lobe of the liver transverse colon transverse mesocolon and small intestine so what are the relation posteriorly so in this picture also you can see this is the kidney here if i will make full kidney so it is occupying the medial border of the kidney okay so it is anterior posteriorly what you will see medial border of the kidney anterior surface and if there is a kidney there will be the renal vessels and this you can see upper part this is the inferior vena cava it is coming so this will also form the relation with the second part of the duodenum but only on the right side right edge of the inferior vena cava and one muscle you can see this muscle is the this muscle is going like this so this will also form the relation with the second part so this is the right swass major muscle so what relation we have studied right kidney right renal vessels right edge of the inferior vena cava and right swass major muscle what lies medially so medial means this part only so we have the head of the pancreas medially and this bile duct is coming and opening into the second part of the duodenum so medially we have the head of the pancreas and bile duct what lies laterally laterally we have this portion only so we have the right colic flexor so this is the right colic flexor here where the ascending colon becomes the transverse colon now we will see the third part of the duodenum so third part if you will see it begins at the inferior duodenal flexor and going toward the right side and meeting with the fourth part of the duodenum meanwhile it is crossing the inferior vena cava and abdominal aorta so in front of the abdominal aorta it will continue as the fourth part of the duodenum so peritoneal relations of the third part so third part is also mostly retroperitoneal and fixed the anterior surface of it is also covered by the peritoneum this full surface is covered by the peritoneum but not at the median plane okay except the median plane all over it is covered by the peritoneum why in the median plane because you will see these two vessels are there they are crossing the third part of the 
duodenum so only this much portion is not covered by the peritoneum okay because of the these are the superior mesenteric vessel crossing the third part of the duodenum and also it is crossed by the root of the mesentery now we will see the visceral relations so anteriorly we have the these vessels are coming these are the superior mesenteric vessels superior mesenteric vessels anteriorly and this portion we have the root of the mesentery okay so root of the mesentery will also form the anterior relation so anteriorly we have the superior mesenteric vessel artery and vein and root of the mesentery posterior relations so posteriorly we have the right ureter and the right swas major muscle these two structure are there and also you will see from the abdominal aorta there will be the gonadal vessels also crossing like this so gonadal vessel will be there and this you can see inferior vena cava is there and abdominal aorta is there so all these are forming the posterior relations so posteriorly we have the relations the right ureter right swas major right gonadal vessels inferior vena cava and abdominal aorta superior relations superiorly we have the this one this portion of the pancreas we have the uncinate process and the head of the pancreas and inferiorly definitely you will see the coils of the jejunum now we will see the fourth part of the duodenum so this is the fourth part after crossing the abdominal aorta it is running upwards and it is reaching up to the level of the l2 vertebra because it is ascending part here it will turn like this and continue as a jejunum it is continuing as a jejunum and this portion is known as duodeno jejunal flexure okay so this is known as the duodeno jejunal flexure now what are the peritoneal relations so it is also covered by the peritoneum anteriorly so it is the retroperitoneal part now we will see the visceral relations so what are the relations anteriorly so anteriorly if i will complete this this is the transverse colon and along with the transverse mesocolon and we have seen the lesser sac also just up above and you have the stomach also stomach we have formed like this now this is the stomach so stomach will also form the anterior relation with the fourth part so what are the anterior relation transverse colon transverse mesocolon lesser sac and stomach so what are the relations posteriorly so posteriorly along with the vertebra we have the sympathetic chain okay so we have the left sympathetic chain and this kidney kidney is there so we have the left renal artery is there left uh, gonadal arteries are there and uh, we have the inferior mesenteric vein so these are the structure posteriorly left sympathetic chain left renal artery left gonadal artery and inferior mesenteric vein so what lies toward the right side on the right side we have just only the attachment of the upper part of the root of the mesentery so root of the mesentery will be there to the right side and toward the left side left side what we have this is the left kidney and we have this one is the left ureter so to the left side we have the left kidney and left ureter